Hey everybody, Patrick from HDRGB here again today. I am coming at you from a little bit north of uh, where I live on a sort of vacation of sort. Uh, I'm up here for the holidays, enjoying the nice weather. I have the river by the house. I have the wonderful trees and the birds and all the cool animals that are here that aren't very uh, present in the city. And, uh, you know, to have a little bit of uh, fun, specifically some nostalgic fun, I brought along my PlayStation 2 and um, my little LCD TV here I have. And in this video, I am going to be showing how I hook it up using the best possible signal, that being uh, the native component cables that the PlayStation 2 is capable of using. Uh, this generation of, or sorry, <laughs> this generation, that generation of gaming, uh, the PS2, the GameCube, and the Xbox was the first generation to utilize component cables, so it was sort of the crossover between uh, the old school CRT and then the new LCD, and uh, the versatility of the component cables cannot be understated. I am able to hook up this console to the big LCD TV I have here at the house here, uh, and it works wonderfully, or I can hook it up to an old LCD TV. So uh, if this is your first time here, we uh, are a channel that talk about all about retro gaming and getting the best possible signal through RGB, HDMI uh, installations, or you know wherever we can use native signal where possible. So please uh, make sure to destroy the like button, Leave me a comment, let me know what you think of the setup, how you incorporate yours, and uh, you know, you watching the video really helps with the YouTube algorithm, it lets YouTube know that you're interested in this content, and I am specifically trying to uh, adhere to the requests of the fans, you guys have told me you like when I post videos about my TV. Uh, so this is actually the second video I'm making on this little LM uh, LCD TV. Uh, if you're interested in seeing the first one, um, I should have probably in one of the corners, I'm going to say right there, I'm going to post a, um, a little link to the first video. So make sure after this video you check that one out or open up in the browser, queue it up, whatever you like. And in that previous video, uh, I hooked up my Sega Saturn to this LCD and the results were mixed. So here I want to sort of do uh, a new video, a follow-up of sort, and explain why the PlayStation 2 and newer uh, consoles are better suited for this versus uh, the old ones. So uh, take some time, relax, grab a cup of coffee, again, destroy the like button, and uh, sit back here and enjoy on this one, okay? So uh, what I'll call this video type is... Um, I'm going to call this video type, this is part of our Raw Dog Shoot series. So in other words, this is just me with a tripod and my um, cell phone camera um, where I just sort of go off rails, you know, talk about the things that are important to me and try to make this as candid and as genuine as possible, uh, where some of the other videos I post, uh, you know, are more... Um, uh, maybe higher production uh, quality, um, I'll edit them, I'll add music, things like that. This is just going to be one of those quick shoots, and I want it to be as fun as possible. So uh, with all that out of the way, let's, uh, let's get into this video. Okay, so what I have here is uh, my PlayStation 2. This is just a standard PS2. Nothing has been, um, nothing has been done to it at all. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm using uh, a set of component cables. Now, when uh, getting component cables, you pretty much have a lot of options here. You have the expensive uh, sort of monster branded cables, which are, you know, good cables, kind of overpriced. Then you have the OEM PlayStation cables, or you can even go as getting something cheap as like a, like a Chinese knockoff PS2 cables. All of them will do the trick. Uh, in this video, I'm using the monster cables only because I have them. I think I picked them up in a in a bargain bin for real cheap. And you know, when you when you see a good set of cables and you identify they're good, you know they're thick, they're they they look like they're they're sturdy. Just pick them up. You never know when you're when you're going to need them. So after having these sitting in my closet for ages, I thought, okay, well I'm going to come up here for for the for the weekend. Uh, let me see let me see if I can get some use out of them. And and that's exactly uh, what I did here. So. I am using this little uh, mini TV that I picked up ages ago, and it's basically, it's a PVM, so a professional video monitor, it was a, like a road monitor, it was just used for like quick testing, and in a few minutes I'm going to flip it over and uh, show you how it looks, uh, and the reason I'm using this is just because it's a very small portable television. Um, I had a big, what is it, I think it was a 27 inch, 
uh, Sony, yeah, CRT that I got when I was a kid. It was a Trinitron, and I had it here in this house, um, but I was asked to move it simply because it was taking up space. I, I don't use it much. I come here once in a while. Uh, so I thought, okay, well, let me let me bring a small monitor and just do some testing. So this is sort of my replacement. It's small. It's easy to carry. You know, I can I can pick this thing up. You know, I can, you know, it's it's like super, super tiny. So it's uh, it's perfect. And it's very well suited for this application. And I'll show you why. So I already have the cables hooked up. Let's just get started by turning on the monitor. Okay. So I already have running uh, the component cables to the TV. And at the bottom here, we'll see it's selected to RGB component. So now all I got to do is power on the PS2. And there we go. It'll say component 480, 60 frames per second, interlay signal. Okay, the PlayStation 2 is capable of progressive, but very few games use it, so it'll show up as interlaced. Now, what you notice with these monitors is when they fall out of sync, they'll start to jag a little, and you, you see exactly sort of what happened there. It was, uh, it was moving a little bit. Ah, perfect example. So it's kind of stuttering, and the colors are a little off. This is actually just a very simple, what do we got here? There we go. We got to just kind of wiggle it a little. It's actually just a loose um, cable. So what I did is I cleaned this off a little with some isopropyl alcohol and then sort of put the connections back in. And we should get stability in a second here. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So this is what it's supposed to look like. Sometimes when the, uh, when the cables are loose, it'll, it'll fin uh, you know, be a little finicky. It's, uh, it's funny because on a CRT TV, you'll pretty much just lose the signal, whereas on an LCD TV, it'll just pick up what it picks up and omit the rest. So you might get red, you might get blue, you might be missing green, uh, the sync might be in and out, uh, but essentially this is the stability that we're looking for. And so what I have here is basically <laughs> a portable PS2, I, I guess, and I say portable because I can easily carry this PlayStation 2, I can easily carry this monitor, I need two power cables, uh, and then that's it. I just hook them up to each other and then I'm golden. Uh, and the reason why the PlayStation 2 works really, really well is sort of, uh, I alluded to in the beginning of the video, is that this is that generation of gaming, or this was that generation of gaming, where they were transitioning from CRTs to LCDs. And the programming of the, of the consoles was done in a way where the sync would line up with monitors like this very, very well. Um, so, for example, in old consoles, like... NES, Sega Saturn, something like that. Uh, if you hook them up to a CRT TV, your the CRT TV is going to process whatever signal is being given to it, is assuming it can do the 240p or, or 480p, 480i, whatever it is. You'll get a picture. If I try hooking this up to here, specifically the NES, I actually won't get an image because the the TV deinterlaces a lot of the signal. Uh, and because the sync is off, it won't display a picture. Now, that's just a very bare bones explanation of it. Uh, a better example is when I hook up uh, a Sega Saturn, uh, what you'll get is you'll constantly see uh, it changes resolution. So the image will go off, it'll go back on, and it kind of looks like there's something wrong. In the beginning, I thought there was something wrong with the TV or with the cables I was using, but in reality, what happens is with the Saturn, um, they will change resolution on the fly. So the boot up menu might be in a different resolution than the opening FMV, which is also a different resolution of the game itself when it starts. So because of the change in resolution, these LCD monitors, I guess it's sort of like a feature they have, is where they'll automatically change, but it has to like desync and resync as fast as possible. Uh, with the PlayStation 2, we don't have any of those issues. So for this TV specifically, I like to use these newer systems, PS2, GameCube, uh, I don't have an Xbox, but I'm sure it'll work fine, rather than trying to take an old school console and playing it on a LCD. If you want to take an old, older school console, like a PS1 or a Saturn or something like that, and play it on an old school TV, 
Um, your best bet is just to use component cables into a CRT TV if possible. If you want to use it on a modern TV, an upscaler like a, a RetroTank, SCART, or a OSSC, or you know one of those Chinese upscalers, whatever you can afford, uh, those will do the trick, and that's the, the method. But for here, I'm really, really happy that I'm able to use the PlayStation 2 on this monitor and not have to deal with any bullshit. Uh, and we can actually, so take this to a long gaming session and last night I played this game funny enough I booted up my save file from when I was really young um, I don't like not you know completing RPGs so uh, I decided to play it and I, I actually sat here in this chair and I got sucked in uh, so if you know anything about the Suikoden series it is a very very not only a good series but a very mature series uh, and I've learned sort of over the years, you know, as I get older, that I only have X amount of time to play video games. And, it, you know, since my favorite genre of games are Japanese RPGs, it's, it's really tough to, you know, make the time to play it. So when I decide to play a game, I want to make sure that I'm going to enjoy it. And if I don't, I really hate, you know, stopping a game a few hours in because I don't like it. So I try to do research before I play it. And some series I've learned that I really like, like Suikoden... Uh, the Final Fantasy series, uh, Dragon Quest, whereas other series, uh, namely, for example, like the Tales of series, I, I know that's a big, you know, series, great gameplay, but it's not my kind of game. And what it comes down to is sort of like the maturity level. I like seeing, uh, I like seeing people going through hardships, applications, and um, issues in the games that can translate to real life. You know. Uh, things that aren't too melodramatic and, you know, is not all about like, oh, we're best friends, we're going to save the world. It's more like, you know, you've had uh, hardships in life, something that's more reflective of reality. And, and those are the kind of games in Suikoden has all those elements, which is why I keep coming back to this game. Super fun. So uh, as we see, like this is this is just phenomenal. So let me turn the TV around and I'll show you how the hookup is in the back. And we might lose uh, signal while I do this just because, you know, the cable might come loose or whatever. But you know what? Before I do that, let me let me show you how I take this up to the next level. So here, if we pan over, we'll notice on the beautiful PS2, we have a memory card. And what's that? We also have a little wireless uh, receiver. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but the PlayStation 2 did have a wireless controller. It wasn't an official release, but it was uh, a reputable company, and that was Logitech. So Logitech made a wireless PS2 controller that was officially, um, what is it, uh, trademarked, uh, sponsored, whatever, by PlayStation. Not made by PlayStation, but endorsed by PlayStation. So they have the logo right there. And this isn't one of those like cheap Mad Cats controllers. This is a legit, really feels good. I would argue that this feels better than the original one. So we have the dongle hooked up. And if we just push some buttons, boom. Now the reason I elected to use this one and not a wired controller uh, mostly has to do with the fact that if I get tired of playing on this or if I get eye strain or if I just want a bigger uh, monitor, I can take this console, hook it up to my uh, big TV uh, using component cables, and then I can lean back, you know, 30 feet or however many meters, and I can play with a wireless controller. So I specifically took this for that reason. And, yeah, I mean, we can we can start the files and whatever. I won't get into the game, but... We can see my save files here. So I'm 40 hours in. And because I'm a Castlevania fan, I named the <laughs> I named the file Alucard. So this has been a blast. So wireless controller, highly recommended for the PlayStation 2. If you can pick this one up uh, at the used market, I would really, really recommend it. Probably the best controller I've ever used for the system. So now, let's get into how I have these hookups. So, as you see, we're losing a little bit of signal. That is totally okay. I'm just going to totally move this out of the way. So, here we go. This is how this sucker looks. I'm going to move it as close as possible. So, what I have here is these are my component cables. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the features of, um, of the TV. I mean, it has S-video inputs. It has uh, composite inputs. People are going to ask about the model so, uh, of the TV. Uh, I have the power adapter on right now, so the, the model escapes me. If you want to know what model it is, just uh, link down in the comments below, ask me, and uh, I'll let you know later. Uh, but essentially here, what we have is we have straight, these are the monster cables I was talking about. So these are the 
uh, monster component cables. Again, whether you get these or the OEM ones, that being Sony or aftermarket ones, whatever, just get what you can find, what you can afford. The important thing is if you can use composite, sorry, component over composite, over S video, the PlayStation has it native. It also has SCART RGB native, making it a very, very versatile console. It's very rare that you find a system that has both SCART RGB and component. And the only reason I'm using component here over RGB is because this monitor has um, connections uh, for that. So though I can use a SCART cable with, uh, what is it, a BNC breakout cable. So, you know, you put the SCART in and then you get the breakout cables and then you plug them in like this. You can do that. But for me, it was just as simple as using the original component cables and then some BNC adapters, right? So you get three of these and then they hook in. Uh, normally it's red, green, blue. In this case, it's what? Green, blue, red. And we don't need sync here. So yeah, we pop these guys in and this allows basically converts the BNC into RCA, so you can then, you know, hook up the signal, that kind of thing. So that's how I have it hooked up. And then to get the audio out, I use uh, a 3.5 millimeter to RCA adapter, and then this little sucker has a little, little speaker there. So we hook up the audio, we got audio in, and then we're, we're golden. Now, as you know, the audio on a little monitor like this isn't that great, so if I wanna step it up, you know, and have everything sort of marinate very well and have it the best, which is sort of what I'm aiming for here because I don't like to, to game like a chump, what you can do is you can take your headphones. I have these old Bose headphones that I bought like 15 years ago. Real good quality headphones. I just replaced the earmuffs on them. Man, the old ones were disgusting, so. I bought new muffs and these are like brand new. So then we can hook this guy up into here, right? Into, what is it? We got the headphones right there. And now we have loud, delicious audio coming from the Bose headphones with best audio, best signal, PS2. I mean, this is a whole lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing sort of how I modernize my PlayStation. And, and again, when I say modernize, I mean, you could have done this back in the day, but I, I would assume that most people use the component, sorry, composite cables, the yellow tip, which was packaged with the PS2. These were, you know, like aftermarket cables. And some consoles, you know, these cables got expensive, like the GameCube and other consoles, they remain cheap. So you can still pick up a set of component cables for relatively cheap for the PS2. And then that way, you know, you don't have to go bent and kind of find one of these monitors. The only reason I was able to acquire one of these is because, you know, I found one cheap. But any modern TV, probably a reputable brand, you know, like a, like a Sony or a Toshiba, you know, a Philips, you know, maybe a Samsung or something like that will have a component input um, in the back. So you can hook this up to a 50, 60 inch TV or whatever, and uh, you'll, you'll get good signal. It'll come up as four by three, it'll look original, and you don't even have to do anything. So pick yourselves up a set of component cables and let me know in the comments below. Tell me, how do you game with your PS2? Do you have a dedicated monitor like I do for this? Do you have it hooked up into your uh, modern setup? What I find is that when I have too many consoles hooked up, I don't know what to play. So I try to, you know, separate sort of how I do things. I have this monitor for this, and then I sort of have these things together in holy matrimony so I can always pick up some games uh, and game around. So I bought Sukoden 3. Have you guys played it? Are there any other games that, that you like? Just talk to me. I'm, I'm curious what you guys think. And if this video uh, resonates well with you, please hit the, the like, the comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Because I want to hear from you guys. You're the ones that told me to get the tripod, which I did. So thank you very much. You know, you're the guys who uh, gave me a lot of good tips. And my videos are constantly getting better. So anyhow, this is December. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, great holidays. And looking forward to seeing you and talking to you in the new year. Thank you very much. Take care.